Rachel, firstly, I must say that this is um, this is a rather interesting interview because you were one of the first people I met in the in the creative industry when I was starting out a couple of years ago. I think you should tell the story of how we met. Well, we were just sort of walking to our <laughs> to our respective destinations. You you were probably headed somewhere much cooler than me. I was headed to a shift um, as a waiter at the Millennium Centre. And um, I, I saw you, I saw you carrying um, some, some flakes, yeah, and I was like, I spotted you, and I thought, I'll go up to her and I'll say hi, because I'm, I'm a massive fan of your work, and it was just sort of like a really brief passing thing, and then I was telling you how I really wanted to go into the creative industry, how I, I, I've always loved TV, and, and you, you, were, you were fortunately very, very kind and helpful, and, um, and then three years later, here we are, having a chance. Well, that speaks very highly to you and your dedication and, and also to your viewers about that it can be done. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, but it's, always, it's odd because I had just been to the Tesco to buy my chocolate addiction and uh, my love of flake. And I was probably on my way to the studio um, where the flakes aren't available in the, in the canteen. And... Um, so, and it's so unusual as a behind the scenes person to be recognized. Mm -hmm. So at the time, you know, it, it was summer 2017. Um, so I'm guessing, thinking about where the, where the dates add up, you were in Cardiff, uh, Peter Capaldi had his last episode just being filmed. Um, I'm guessing you were probably in the process of filming Twice Upon a Time. That seems to be, uh, that, that works for the timeline. And, I've been very involved with the timeline recently because I've been doing so many um, uh, live tweets and, and behind the scenes and um, I've been doing Instagram behind the scenes pictures and so people, I've had to go back and, and really look at dates about when things happened. Mm -hmm. So that makes, that, that would be, summer of 2017 would have been twice upon a time. And, and of course, Twice Upon a Time, uh, an episode which is very important in the Doctor Who universe. Um, Peter Capaldi's, sadly, his last episode as the Doctor. Um, what was it like to be involved in that? Um, oh, wow. Uh, epic. <laughs> I think the simplest way is to say epic. I mean, knowing that you are sending off a Doctor, knowing that you're getting to do a regeneration, which was uh, amazing. And also it was uh, Stephen Moffat's final um, and Murray Gold's. And so um, it was sad, it was beautiful. Um, and I feel like there's Doctor Who quotes that should come out, but it was amazing to be the person who was selected to be part of that, to represent that moment. Mm -hmm. And of course, not just an important episode for Peter Capaldi, but also a very important episode for Jodie Whittaker. Um, do yes. you remember the moment that you found out that, that she was going to take on that role? Yeah, well, because I found out when, I mean, they wouldn't tell me who it was. No. So I, I, no, I found out when everybody else found out and the, when Wimbledon was thankfully very short that. <laughs> and uh, so I had speculation, I had ideas, I knew, I had been told certain things, and so I had certain clues. Um, but no, I didn't, uh, and I had certain thoughts until probably about two to three days before uh, the announcement came, I pretty much narrowed it down to uh, being Jody. Mm -hmm. But even then I wasn't 100%. Um, but no, they, uh, Chris Chibnall would not tell me. And, and your, your so I was asking like questions because I was filming her. So that was on a Sunday and I filmed her on Wednesday. Um, so I knew that I would only, I would meet her the next day. I would meet the new doctor the next day and prep and, or on, even on Tuesday and shoot them on Wednesday. And so there were a lot of things that had to, I had to say, does this person have experience? Um, I'm going to put them in a physical situation are they going to be okay in this physical situation um, in terms of how we were yanking her out of the TARDIS, um, how we were dragging her along the floor, all the things that I was prepping. Um, and also if it was a completely new, you know, relatively young and new actor, you have a totally different approach from if it's um, a very experienced actor and, and how much time had been spent with them and with her, I can say now and Chris, developing the part and were they a huge fan because there's a different approach if you're um some 
like Capaldi, who absolutely has been a Who fan for his life, um, versus Matt Smith, who barely watched Doctor Who. So those are different. So that was a lot to take on with sort of 24 hours of, of prep. And what I did find out, what I was told by Chris was, it's a, she's an experienced actor, and so and and will be game to do all the physical things. And of course, in that moment, you got to blow up the TARDIS. Um, that that's incredible. Tell me about the process of that. The whole section was um, so. I mean, Stephen was responsible for Peter's portion, and Chris was responsible for Jody's portion. So I had. S- totally different types of meetings for the two different showrunners. Mm. And um, so where we were, when, where we left off at, at, exactly at the moment and where we went. And I took a very different approach to how I was going to film um, the, I, I just wanted to make sure that the introduction to the new doctor had a different style from the, inter, from the exiting Peter style. So we changed the colors of the TARDIS and, and all the, at the very last minute, because I don't know exactly who it is, so I don't know how, I mean, that's not just an arbitrary decision. It had to feel right for Jody, even though I knew that she was going to be wearing the doctor's clothes, so I didn't have to worry about that element, um, or Peter's clothes. Uh, I didn't have to worry about what we were dressing her in. But, um, yeah, so, and then this sort of exploding TARDIS and the, the debates about how much and, and, and what does it mean that the TARDIS is ejecting the doctor? Mm-hmm. Um, and does it mean that the TARDIS is rejecting the doctor? What is it, what are we trying to say here? How much can we represent? A uh, lot of big questions. Um, I imagine, um, you know, even just getting the chance to kind of, you know, have your finger on the, on the trigger and blow up the TARDIS was, was so fun. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I, lo- I, you know, I often say, and I would say this to Steven sometimes, I really like blowing stuff up. So I said it the other day on set actually, you know, <laughs> nothing like a good explosion, very cathartic, yeah. um, a, a good safe explosion. Uh, very- I've never got the chance to experience a good safe explosion. <laughs> At some point in my life, I'm hoping to give it a go. Um, it's very cathartic, I highly recommend, it's really fun. I found some old footage the other day of when we were setting up the um, best of days. I was looking for old footage to help uh, Ben with because we had the old um, uh, black hole, but I was looking for other footage that he might want to use and and what I had of the spaceship. And I found some beautiful slow motion footage from, and I think it must have been from um, Death in Heaven. Mm of Cybermen on green screen blowing up at high speed. And I was just like, yeah, that was a really good one. (laughs) This is useful footage. One day Um, I'm gonna sell it. It's black market footage. And you mentioned that um, Best of Days, um, obviously uh, specially produced Doctor Who content for lockdown. Um, Firstly, how how are you doing in lockdown? How are you finding it? I've I've been very, very fortunate in lockdown. First of all, I live in Vancouver, which has done incredibly well. Um, even for a, for a, for a big city, um, really, really, really well managed. I can say, looking at all my friends in difficult countries, um, and feeling uh, not smug but fortunate. Um, but I've been working on a film. Uh, I've been in, which I finished shooting in December, and so we've been editing, and so I've been able to work safely. Uh, work in an editing room with one other person who's in her own little bubble um, and be stay incredibly busy um, so that the misery of, of isolation has been um, has been active my family's been everybody's been well so I've been lucky mm-hmm. um, of course I know people and I know people who know people and it's uh, terrible and I send my kindness um, and we know we're far from over, so hurry up with the vaccine. Doctor Who uh, has brought the community together uh, during this really, really difficult time. Um, why do you think that is? I think the community, well, first of all, I think it's all the things that the Doctor represents, and it's all the things that I love about Doctor Who. It's about Doctor Who. It's about humanity, um, and I think um, and the people who work dedicatedly 
to on the show and the fans all have this tremendous love and it's hard to find i mean there is no other show like doctor who and there's no show with the amount of history and but ultimately it's the the kindness and the humanity of the content that's brought um that that people respond to so mm -hmm. Um, I think there's, I love doing Doctor Who conventions. It's the warmest group of people. Um, and I love the multi, multi, multi-generational. One of my favorite things about walking through Cardiff Bay um, in those days when the Doctor Who experience was there was seeing three, three generations um, of families all fighting about who was the best doctor. And um, especially when you'll get grandpa telling the young kids, well, you don't even know what it was like in the, in old, who, in classic who, mm. um, you know, you, you have no idea how brilliant, uh, all those doctors were. I have to introduce you. And, and this, um, this feeling like you have, you, 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 you have ownership of certain periods of Dr. Who mm -hmm. and love of certain periods of Dr. Who, but there's also one of my, what I try and tell people is whenever there's change, that's what's made Dr. Who given it longevity. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, you worked with um, the legendary Peter Capaldi, um, the 12th Doctor. What was that like? Um, well, P P Peter's brilliant. And, and clearly seven episodes together, um, we had a wonderful relationship uh, and his kindness and his warmth and his take on the Doctor. And he's such a fine actor that my job was to just represent, give him a safe space and represent uh, beautiful things with love of Doctor Who um, around him and let him do his genius. Um, and in, in addition with, with uh, I was just so unbelievably fortunate to have Stephen Moffat's scripts to work with. So um, I just, Sometimes, yeah, how all the pictures of directors have them pointing. That's sort of what you do. I'll just point over there and somebody else will make it brilliant. And I'll take the credit. And, um, and just finally, Rachel, um, if, if Chris Chibnall ever came knocking and asked you to return to Doctor Who, um, would you do it? Yes. I mean, if I could make it. So he did ask me right away. Um, and I, I had just spent... 10 months away from my family doing the last three uh, episodes. And I said, I can't do it this series. I can't, I can't be away from home. Um, very important period of time for my older, but for my younger daughter who was graduating from high school and getting her universities. And they had sacrificed a lot for me to spend a lot of time in, in Cardiff. Um, so, but now um, if he comes knocking, we'll have a serious conversation. Yeah. Amazing. Um, well, uh, Rachel, thank you so much for chatting. As I say, um, it's, it's really interesting to chat to you simply because three years ago, of course, we did meet in Cardiff Bay. Um, so, but I think we should congratulate, spend a moment congratulating you for thank you very much. Mean, well, especially because I, I often meet people who say they want to do things and then go off and do what their parents tell them and uh, don't get to do, don't pursue what that, what they really want to pursue. And I'm glad to see you both doing it and succeeding at it. So congratulations back at you. Well, thank you very much. Um, Diochen Vau, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. I can't say it properly. Don't make me speak well, so I'd be embarrassed. <laughs>